Okay, everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Clive Barker's first novel, The Damnation Game. This came out in 1985. It was really kind of a, a breakout hit for a horror novelist in the mid-80s. And, uh, you know, the co we always review the covers. I think the cover is all right. I mean, it doesn't really uh, knock me out or anything, but it's, it's decent for a horror novel. For, you know, published in the 80s. You know, what is, you know, Clive Barker. Dude, this dude, of all the horror, of all the horror writers I read, this dude is one of the most um, innovative in the grotesque. If that makes sense. I mean, this guy's stuff spirals into dark, dark places. Unlike pretty much any other horror novelist before, after, or since. I, I mean, I've read a lot of his stuff. It always concerns um, death, life after death, religion, uh, stuff like that. Re uh, reincarnation, resurrections. Things like this. The Damnation Game. What is it about? It starts spectacularly with uh, sort of this prologue set in Warsaw, Poland, right after World War II, where the um, place is just destroyed and everybody is, you know, nobody is happy. I mean, the, the place is still occupied by the communists and they're treating the people horribly and... Um, the place is, there's destruction everywhere. There's lawlessness. There is no law. It's just, and he does such a great job of describing this scenery. It's like, you know, it's like savage. It's like living in savagery. But then there's this underbelly of criminal sort of mobster stuff going on. And that's where we start with this guy who's sort of, it's got, it's, and it's got a very dreamlike quality to it too. The writing is very, very literary, very dreamlike. And it's very like, I don't know how to explain it other than you got to read it. There's a thief and he's just called the thief and he's in, he wants to play cards against this guy that he's heard about. That's never lost at a card game. And he's like, this guy, he it can't be real. The guy's got to be cheating or something. I'm going to go play him in cards and figure out what his deal is because I think I can beat him if it's a legit card game, you know, and, and but the guy's never been, bested he's never been beat and so that's sort of the um it's kind of like a, a game it is a damnation game it's sort of like a there's a deal with the devil that's sort of the theme of this whole story is you're making a deal with the devil and then we jump to uh, a prison in modern day well which would have been 1985 we jump to a prison in england and you know i i know that clive barker i, I read some interviews where he really researched prisons for just the few little chapters at the beginning of this book where that are set in the prison. And I got to say, having worked in a prison myself for a lot of years, Clive Barker gets a pretty good. He gets the pretty much the dynamics of what happens between guards and inmates and how inmates feel about being locked up. He really gets a good. And again, he creates a real impending sense of doom. This dude is stuck in prison and he's like, my gosh, is, my, is this, is this going to be the rest of my life just dealing with this prison? I just, he's, and, and, and you really feel for it. I mean, um, and then something happens while he's in prison. He gets offered, hey, we'll let you out of prison. It's kind of like a deal with the devil, though. It's another damnation game. We're going to let you out of prison, but you're going to have to work for this guy that lives in this mansion. And that's about all we can tell you about it. You're just going to be sort of like a butler slash bodyguard for this dude, because we know you got the temperament that we need for a bodyguard for this particular guy. And he's like, well, hell, anything to get me out of prison, right? And so he goes out of prison and he gets to this um, rich, eccentric guy living in a mansion. And, and that's where things just go bonkers, haywire. I mean, it, and then in, in the story, there's, you know, if, if, at the same time, he's feeling relief of being out of prison and meeting all the meeting all the different characters that live in this weird mansion, uh, and, and they are weird characters living in this mansion. And the mansion itself is just weird. There's a line in the book that I love where it talks about. And it's towards the end where it's just talking about 
and he was walking through the entrails of the mansion. Basically just the hallways. But I love the way that Clive Barker describes the hallways as the entrails of the mansion. It's just that gives you everything you need to know about this place, man, and the people living in it. It is straight up bonkers and it turns sideways and grotesque in a hurry. In a hurry. It's just an oh, here's a disclaimer, folks. R-rated disclaimer. This is beyond R-rated. This is like above and beyond. This is like NC-17. And there is a lot of, if you're sensitive to this kind of thing or triggered by this kind of thing, there's a lot of animal death and cruelty. Freakish death and cruelty. I mean, it is just like mind-blowingly. It's like, oh my God. And so um, if, if that's not your bag, I would stay away from this book because it is in here and it is in here a lot because there's a lot of satanic ritual type stuff going on and just things like this, a lot of devilish, devilish worship, just damnation, making deals with the devil, folks. We're making deals with the devil in this whole book. And it is, like I said, it's a hellish nightmare. This book turns into just a grotesque, twisted, fever dream of a hellish nightmare that I, it's just, and it's, it had launched Barker, Clive Barker's career because it was just like people had never read anything like it. It is, it is one of the more unique horror novels you're ever going to read. And, um, I actually kind of think it's still probably his best. I did like Everville. How was it, or was it The Great and Secret Show? Those books came out at the same time. I get them confused, but... He's a great writer. That's the thing about Clive Barker is if you want to read sort of a literary writer's take on horror, a guy that can just write a sentence that will, a deliciously beautiful sentence that will horrify you at the same time, Clive Barker is your guy. I mean, he's the guy. I mean, the entrails of the mansion. Come on, I, I could have never thought of that. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Because that's the way that mansion turns out. It's, it's like a... It's like a bonkers haunted house, and it's just, it's got like a real sort of um, old European, like a 1985 Cold War thriller type feel to it also, um, which is very unique. I mean, it's just, it, it, it could. I think I I think I pretty much, I don't want to give you, oh, Mammalian and the Razor Eater. Those are the bad guys. Those are the names of the bad guys. Mammalian and the Razor Eater. And they, these dudes, these dudes, man. Oh, they are sickos. They is sickos. Straight freaking sick. Anyway, you'll have to read it to see what happens to our main man who gets out of prison to go look, to go live in this mansion. Because it, 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 it goes, it goes bonkers. It goes grotesquely bonkers. Anyway. I like this. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. It was a... Gosh, yeah, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. No, let's go 9. Because it's going to go 9. This, 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 I'm going to be doing a uh, my top 10. I don't know. This probably won't make my top 10, but we're going to see horror, horror novels. We'll, we'll see. I'll be doing that list soon. We'll see where it falls. 